Hey everybody, welcome to Beauty Cocktails and Girl Talk. Today we're talking to Shannon Kenny Carbonell, and she has a book launching soon, so stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Shannon. Oh, We're so my pleasure. You. Thanks for having me. Of course. We have one of our uh, signature questions for you to start okay. off. What is the number one beauty product that you must have? Okay, there is one. And I've just become a fan. And it is a, it's an expensive one. So I don't really do much else. But it's the Augustine, oh, I don't even know if I'm going to say his name right. Augustine Bader. Is that right? Um, and it's called The Cream. You guys are younger than me, so you don't need it right now. <laughs> but when you do. No. Oh, oh, I, I love good skincare. I'm all about good skincare. Yeah, like, so it's, it's, yeah it's, it's amazing. It's just called The Cream. And um, it's in a blue bottle if I could run upstairs I would right now and get it for you but um <laughs> my dog could take my place <laughs> but, um oh it's amazing and you can get the small travel size the next biggest the biggest it's, it's expensive um but you just use a little bit and I was on um you allowed to mention stores can I mention stores yeah of course uh, you know you know Violet Gray yes Violet Gray, I've heard of Violet Gray. yeah um, I was on her website and it was, you know, beauty people, makeup artists, whatever, were talking about this and it's their, it was their must to, must have product and it, it, they were running out of it. So that just oh. went, oh, and wow. running out of anything, I'm like, I've got to get it now. And must so I started really a small day. one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me. Do I have like a super dirty mind or do you think the cream is an unfortunate name for that well the, <laughs> i've got some other stuff for that and you can it right now oh my god <laughs> i did no, find no. some amazing stuff <laughs> oh. 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 you don't need that right now <laughs> oh but i tell you what the advertisement was for that stuff it was it was the brand oh and i'm gonna give you the brand's name oh It'll come to me. But the subcaption was, you're going to need a bucket. Oh, my <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ready, babe. You're going to need a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in menopause. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it it's good. It works. <laughs> that was brilliant. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> I've been uh, married a long time too. <laughs> so, Shannon, if you uh, if you could quarantine with anyone living or dead for twenty four hours, who would it be? What would you drink? It doesn't have to be alcohol. And what would you guys do? Oh God! Anybody? Anybody? Wow! Oh my gosh! I think it would have to be Jane Austen. Ooh, that is. I think we would drink. Deep. Yeah, I think we would have to drink Cadillac margaritas, Jane. And I would just talk to her. I would talk to her about her writing process. I would talk to her about it you know, her illnesses. But she'd be magically well on this island. We would swim and naked in the water. And I would drink margaritas with the little Grand Manier on the top. And um, I, I would just, I'd love to hang out with her and become friends for a little while. Oh, That's I love it. My head. I'm sure there's more people, but <laughs> yes. I love it, I love it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've read her back to front sideways three times around. Beautiful. Yeah. Amazing. So to build on that, what is your idea of an epic girls' night in or out? You know, pre-COVID. 
post COVID. Okay, so I've had a lot of those. Um, gosh, and more, more so now. Well, you know, okay, no. I think back when I was younger and wanting to fall in love, I had great epic nights. I grew up in a little town called Avalon, Avalon Beach, and we were in a kind of a a big gang of people, but they, but all the guys were surfers and we were all like towel holders back in those days. Now all the girls surf, which is great, but they were big fiberglass boards when we were young and we never wanted to get our nose broken or anything like that. So, um, so it would be, I would get on the bus like I used to with my girlfriends and we would, oh my, okay. I'd be at my house and my dad used to give us a couple of glasses of wine. <laughs> Which was so sweet. Oh my gosh. Get on the bus, a little tipsy. <laughs> and, and you know, drinking age in Australia is eighteen, so we were a little younger. Um, and then we'd go to a party, and one of the best parties they ever did was. Uh, do, do you know the movie Big Wednesday? Mm. Oh, you have to watch it. It's the most. It's the greatest surfing movie, I think, that was ever made. And um, they would love to imitate this movie. Like we, we kind of were living that life just being on the beach and everyone had nicknames and so one one time they had a big Wednesday party and they literally a lot of them were they'd already left high school because all they could do in high school the, the high school was looking over the beach and once you hit the the higher floor you were in the the upper classes and if the surf was they could see the surf and if the surf was big there would be nobody at school no guys at school at least they would leave after like the first period and go and surf. So they left and became, you know, they were laborers and bricklayers and, you know, electricians and plumbers. These guys do really well now, actually. And they're great guys. But so they all had big pickup trucks and they, they filled them with sand and they took it into one of the backyards that they would rent houses together. And they put so much sand in the backyard. You thought you were at the beach and then everybody dressed up like the characters in the movies, which is basically how we dressed. It was sort of like this the movie was made in the 60s and the 70s, and this was the 80s. And I would go there and I would meet the guy that I first fell in love with. And he would be sitting there like he was with his leg up and a little cigarette in his mouth. And he, he was like a rude boy, which was... <laughs> They were much milder now then. You know, he had his hair shaved a little <laughs> long on top. And I'd sit down next to him. We would talk and talk. And, and like maybe at the end of the night, he'd like give me a little kiss. And I'd be like, oh, that was my first kiss. Aww. And I never felt romance mm -hmm. like that. And then we'd make plans next week with my friend. And, and we'd all go out. And, and I'd be like, Elegantly wasted. Oh my gosh. My brother, I'm so sorry. Turn that one down. Um, oh, now it's on this time. It's just like a brother to interrupt you. I know, thanks, my brother. Yeah, he came and cock walked me, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that would, be my, that would be my best girl's night because my girlfriend would meet his friend. This actually happened. Basically. Oh my God. Gosh, I feel and, like I'm like, uh, imagining this happening. Like, I feel like I'm back where you are. Like, as uh, like and that oh was like, God. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, this is what a great kiss feels like. Because I'd had a lot of other kisses that were gross. First love. <laughs> yeah. And he had a lazy eye and it kind of went up to the side. And oh, I just thought it was the most amazing thing. <sighs> you got it. Well, <laughs> I hope you never see this. Oh my God, I would this. die. <laughs> I don't know anyway. if you wrote about it in your book. First of all, congratulations on your book. Thank you. Oh, I have it here. Book. Right? Oh, let's see. Oh, my yes. God. Yeah. Oh, I love that cover. Thank you. I There's a little Easter egg here, too. I, you can't see, but this is a woman under the plane. We have to buy Ooh. it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the book because okay. I know that you talk about your life. So tell us about it. What inspired you? Like, tell us all about it. Well, the book is really about, um, you know, I was a, a working actress. I wasn't a big star, but I worked pretty regularly on TV mostly. And um, I had my first baby and I still worked. But then once my second baby came, I, I kind of, 
I lost a little bit of my drive to work. And also all the work had gone out of LA at that time. And I basically, and my husband was working all over the place. And I decided that I should give up acting and become a full-time mom to my two little boys at that time. And sort of without me knowing it, I almost immediately was gut punched by my, I, gut punched by only me. And it was sort of my own ego and my ambition. And I, and it, it, I was fighting with it, even though I made the choice. And it, I was sort of became at war with that and uh, feeling like a loser, feeling like I never made it, having no sense of self. My whole sense of self was wrapped up with being an actress and a famous actress and all these dreams I had had that I just put away very quickly to become a mom. I, I thought I would be at peace with it, but I really wasn't. And I was incredibly lost. And for a few years, quite a few years, and, uh, and I just, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to find myself. And I sort of, I'd say to my husband, I feel like I have nothing. I feel like I'm nothing. I'm a mom. And I knew I was doing the right thing by my kids. Well, what I thought was the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't feel like I thought I would feel. And so then Nestor was on Lost and he was traveling a lot. But by the final year of Lost, they said, you, you're going to need to be here full time with your family because we're going to need you in every, every episode. So we all moved to Hawaii and it ended up being this really amazing year where I think it was being away from LA and sort of seeing it and then no work. I mean, it was just no industry except for the people on the show, but I met this incredible group of women, mostly moms and Nestor met their husbands too. And I wasn't planning on doing that. I was planning on being very quiet and trying to fix this problem, but somehow it was all these friends and they took me on these adventures on the island and sort of I had this real feeling with the land. I've, this, the land is really mystical over there and, it's, and it runs really deep. And I had this really intense connection. And then these adventures, all these interesting things would happen. And, and, one, and just without me knowing it almost, I, uh, I began to fill in. Something in me just filled in and it's very emotional. I don't know. I began to find who I was without all that crap. That I almost brainwashed myself into needing to be when I was very young. And it was almost like signs, like the show Lost. It, it yeah. was like there were signs along the way that and things that we did as a family or that I did with these women. And that they showed me a lot, a bunch of them were military wives too. And one of my best friends, her husband was in Afghanistan most of the time. And I watched her and I watched just how much grace she had, not knowing what would happen to her husband and mothering her kids. And she taught me a lot. Um, and just, I saw the bigger picture and I kind of, without knowing it, I journeyed back to who I really was. And by the end of it, I had this horrible, I had a horrible problem because I had grown so in love with these people and the island, we had to leave, but I'd almost completely gotten better. And then there's something that happened back in LA where I really discovered what I needed to be whole again. And, uh, and I had this story and it was fun, funny, very sad at times because there were a few big family fights um, and the kids were hysterical and they taught me to in many ways. And, and then I had journaled the whole thing and I found I had a book. And so I wrote wow. it. That is so, <laughs> so beautiful. It sounds like you went on this like deep spiritual journey, um, with everything that you're talking about with like the, yeah. the signs that's why i was asking if it was like a spiritual awakening because it sounds like you're you were having synchronous moments it's something like deepak chopra talks about it's like synchronous moments like with the signs mm. because it felt familiar to you like was it kind of like a deja vu type of moment when you were there you, i mean it wasn't even like some of the moments i didn't even know were spiritual i mean some of them were just moments 
Yeah. And yet when I look back at it, I was like, oh my, I mean, some of them, were, I, have to, I had this wild exchange with this woman at um, Long's drugstore, just getting my prescriptions. And it's so funny. Um, and she called me. <laughs> <laughs> a woman from law. And I was like, oh my God, she's going to talk. To what is she going to talk to me about? And she had, and I'd been feeling really um, kind of needy. And, and she just called me to say, I'm so sorry. I didn't recognize you. I see you've done a lot of work. I was fawning all over your husband but I didn't recognize you. And I thought she was going to talk to me about my medication. I was like, oh, so <laughs> embarrassing. What is she going to say to me? And then I was waiting for her to talk about my medication. <laughs> and all she did was just call me to say that. Aww. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. I said, I don't mind. I, lo- I mean, I do love it when people recognize Nestor. And it was like, but, you know, it wasn't that she acknowledged me as an actor. It's just that, oh, she really saw me. And it was sort of like, Wow. I just talk about the weather with the people at <laughs> the Rite Aid here. And in some ways I like that anonymity, but it was just this, I don't know, it was just her. And I was really nervous. I'd had this big family fight before that and I was getting the jitters. And I was like, if this woman can be so open and just just see everybody. I, and I noticed she was like that with everybody when I was next in line. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if she can just see me completely undressed and with my medicine and all my flaws, um, why can't I just do that? Why can't I just step out there? Just the mom of my kids, the wife of Nestor, no Hollywood, nothing. And it gave me the courage then to sort of go on a hike with somebody I didn't know who wanted to hike with me. And because before I was like trying to get out of it, I'm like, I'm gonna do that. And that led to this amazing hike, which was very spiritual. Yeah. These moments just led to the next and the next and the next. So there were like really practical moments that led to really deep spiritual moments like you were talking about. It was so, wild. so inspiring. And just like hearing your story, it's just like, wow. I mean, just the gestures and like the little acts of kindness that this woman yeah. brought to you and like well, how it made you feel about yourself. And just it like opens up this awareness about other things. You're like, yeah. why am I? part of myself like why am I being so critical yeah and it may it probably happens everywhere but I don't know why it just took me getting away and being in this beautiful place to notice it or maybe I had reached the end of the line in I couldn't figure out it I couldn't figure out anything I asked every question I talked to Nestor about it ad nauseum I knew I just couldn't talk to him about it anymore and suddenly I shifted. It's almost like like in the show, um, they talk, and I do, I sort of, I couldn't help but relate it to the show a lot because he was filming it. And I was a huge fan of the show before we even, I, even before Nestor auditioned, I was like, if you ever, ever get a chance to audition for this show, you've got to audition. This is the best <laughs> show. I was a big fan. Like I couldn't even, like when I'd met cast members, I, I had to really stop myself calling them their character names. Oh, <laughs> like, no. Okay, his name is not Hurley. Call him Jorge, okay? Just remember <laughs> that. And so uh, um, so I was kind of tuned in to the island too. About, and then it was like, oh, I shifted. We shifted our bearings because they talk about, you know, they shifted the degrees or the longitude and the latitude of where they, the plane crashed. And I'm like, oh, we did that. You know, we changed our bearings and now I'm seeing the world from a different place. It was almost like I kind of imagined myself on this journey, but it really worked. It was wild. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That was great. So who was the first person that read your book after you'd finished and you, you had it done? Well, Nestor always, mm. you know, poor guy. <laughs> I ran everything by him. But um, I, I actually wrote it as I went as far with it by myself as I could. And then I'm like, OK, this is OK, but I know it can be better. So I, a friend of mine said, why don't you sign up for a class at UCLA, a memoir class? So I did that and um, I found this great teacher through that class. And the class itself was just wild. Like imagine being in L.A. with a whole bunch of people writing their memoirs like they were like sane people, crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> it was wow. There were two women in there who realized what well, was they. I mean, their story was really intense. They were 
they were um, in a sex cult, both of them, but, diff- but in one in Argentina, one in somewhere in Asia, I think. And wow. eventually they found out it was yeah. the same cult. And yeah, so, and then they kind of started to think, oh, they don't want to steal my story. I mean, this really is really oh, wild uh. things happening. <laughs> and then the teacher said, you know, there's a million girls probably writing about their sex cults. I hate to say it, there are, but you, you've got to make it your own story. It's your, it's your point of view on that story, you know? And then they teamed up. It was so wild to watch this class, you know? And they were just so, so very interesting people in this class. And um, so after that class, I just said to her, you know, I hear you coach. I, I'd love to have a book coach, almost like a trainer, you know, like a like a, a physical trainer. And so I worked with her a lot. And so she read it a lot, too. And then um, and then I had a few girlfriends weigh in. Mm-hmm. It was really Nestor who Nestor read. He was you got to be the husband first, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's like my best buddy he's my best friend yeah of he course everything. so yeah uh so Shannon I know that you kind of touched on this already but you know when it comes to challenges like it definitely helps us evolve as people like any challenge in your life so whether this is in the book or this is just something else that you want to share whatever you feel comfortable talking about yeah. tell us about a challenge you had like what you learned from that experience about yourself throughout it. Okay, so I'll do something completely not in the book. Okay, I'll, this is a big challenge. Um, oh, I feel like it's gonna be serious though. That's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna jump to something fun and light after. Okay, okay, so this is a serious <laughs> challenge I had. Um, I had a, I had a, um, like a dryness on my lip and I had a dermatologist who left it for four years. And uh, I kept saying to her, can you just cut this around? She's like, oh, no, I don't want to mess you with your lips. I had kind of different lips. They were a bit bigger, lower lip. Anyway, I actually went back to Hawaii to visit our friends. And it started bleeding. And one of my friends said, you got you to gotta get that look, looked at. This is not good. Your lip is bleeding. And they know in Hawaii, too. They get their, all, all their skin checked all the time. And... Uh, I said, I know, I know. My, 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 my she, one time she said it was herpes. I'm like, well, I never, you know, I do not have herpes. And then she put this cream on it. And nothing happened. I said, I told you, I do not have herpes. And uh, anyway, she said it was all different kinds of things. And and yeah, four years later. So I, it, my friend told me this, and I said, I'm making an appointment now. That night, I made an appointment with um, because they're ahead of time, so I was able to make an appointment. And, uh, and I made it with a doctor who was not her, but in that same office. And I went in and I said, can you just biopsy the crap out of this? Dig deep, I don't care. And the woman, the other doctor had biopsied it, but not very well. And it came back, sure enough, it came back, cancer, stage two. And this was a challenge because then they said, well, you just have to go and have Mohs surgery, which means that they go, you're all in a room together, all these people, and you go to the doctor, and that day he starts to cut your cancer off wherever it is on your face and or, or on your body, I guess. And uh, so I went in, there's all these old people, and they're all coloring like mine, like really pale skin, blue eyes, pale hair. I thought, oh, it's going to be so easy. I'm going to be out of here in a second. Um and uh, so he starts cutting and, and then they look at it through a microscope and they see cancer cells. And if they, after the cut, they see more cancer cells. And so, um, you know, you can go, you can go, you can go, you know, like there's 90 year olds leaving, leaving and I'm sitting here and I'm in, so this was about five years ago. So I'm like in my latish forties, um, I'm the last person there from the day. So he's cut about six times, keep seeing cancer, keep seeing cancer. So I knew, we knew, my husband and I were sitting there, we knew something was really bad. And uh, so we went back in and he said, um, yeah, this, I've cut most of your lip off, uh, this side of my lip. And I was like, wow. Um, he said, do you want to see it? I'm like, no, I don't want to see it. And he goes, 
um, the only thing we can do for you is to cut the other half off. I'm like, I'm not gonna have a lip. And, uh, and I'm vain too. Like I'm, I was one of those women who would look at my eyes like, I will never have to have a lip injection. This is the one thing I've got, got my lips, you know, mm-hmm. you know, kind of proud and obnoxious thinking to myself, I would never say that to anybody else. And uh, he said, yeah, so we're going to have to do this surgery. And he was saying it like it was like, it's a little big surgery. That's how he's described it. He said, we're going to cut your whole lip off. And we're going to take some skin from this part of your mouth and we're going to pull it over and it's called a mucosal flap. And we're going to pull it over and we're going to just stitch here. Most of my patients say they get a dry lip. That's wow. a side of it. I'm like, what? Hold on, what? And he goes, yeah, we'll do that tomorrow. I'm going to schedule you a bit later because I'm going to have to sew up the other people's, you know, all the other geriatrics, like, you know, little tiny things. Here I am. And... And I think he knew I was an actress, but I didn't do it anymore. He goes, yeah. And, uh, and he goes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This, I know this is hard. And, and, uh, and then Nestor and I go back into the car and we're like, this is bad. And we knew it was bad. So we called our doctor, but you know, once, once your wound is open like that, you can't get a plastic surgeon. You can't. And this, this guy was a great doctor. He was a great doctor anyway. So we go back the next day and it is, I think I must've gotten at least 70 shots in my mouth. And the most challenging thing, so this is my most challenging thing, was to lie down, get those shots. And Nestor had to look out the window. He was like holding my leg, but he couldn't even look. And and it was pure vanity. I was like, I lie still, don't cry, don't freak out because I want to have a good lip. <laughs> I want it to look good. <laughs> so, it was so freaking painful. And so, and uh, anyway, it actually all went wrong. Mm. And, uh, and that was another challenging part because it, the lip, all the stitching came apart and the lip dehissed. And I ended up with this very tight, I could only smile like this. And I did have a moment where I I looked in the mirror and I had to come to terms with this might be it, like this might be how I look. And I did say to myself, you know, I'm I'm really vain. And And I said, well, at least I can show pictures of myself as I used to be to my boys. And I can say, this was how I looked. (laughs) <laughs> and I went, and this is how I will look. And I'm a vain person, so it's probably I deserve it. But it was a hard moment. But anyway, long story short, we went to plastic surgeons after that. And the one, one surgeon, he said, don't do anything. All you need to do is get in the shower and stretch your lip like this. Six oh. months. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> it's still not the same, but I managed to get a smile back. Well, your lips look perfect. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going yes. to show you. I have a big <laughs> so and I have. I need to do it. I haven't done it in a while, and I and I get this side plumped up, so mm-hmm. I do have, have a lip injection here, and uh, so I guess it goes to show you actually, don't ever like, uh, you know, what is it? Don't ever uh, covet your own thing that you might have because then you'll <laughs> lose it. But it was very challenging. Mm-hmm. It was a very challenging time. Thank you for sharing that story yeah. with us and being so honest and open about it. Oh, my pleasure. Put sunblock on your lips, ladies. Yes. <laughs> I don't think either of you have to worry, actually. It's always the blonde, blue-eyed, pale skin, freckly, but you probably should do it anyway. Well, sunblock <laughs> is so important. It is. Get hurt. Get hurt, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, What is a mantra that you live by? Oh, my God, that's the best question. That is such a great question. You know, I just was watching um, around the L.A. school district. You can watch these kind of thought leaders. And there was this thought leader. It's an amazing woman. I wish I knew her name, but she's in the the um, she's sort of all about um, the diversity, equity, equity. and inclusion um, and she's an African-American mom and she was amazing. It's right after, you know, all the Black Lives Matter stuff and she was talking about 
um, dealing with her child and, and she'd made a, a stereotype against white people. And she was so amazing with her daughter. Oh, because the daughter wanted, what was it? The daughter wanted, she was watching a cartoon, the daughter, and she wanted to dress up like the white girl, not the black girl in the cartoon. And the mom um, was sort of questioning that. And then the grandma said, let her dress the way she wants. And this woman totally fessed up to that. And she was just so amazing to listen to. And I was like, this woman can really teach me something. And the one thing she taught was that she, her family has a mantra. And I was like, you're, she's just brilliant, just brilliant. And I'm always into people fessing up, you know, I'm about to say. And so I, I listened to her hard from that moment on. And, and, uh, and she said, I always give my family a mantra. And I was like, what's my family's mantra? And I realized when the boys were growing up, we did have a mantra and it was about be good and be kind. So be good and be kind. And then I thought, but that's changed as they've grown up. You know, now they're, they're good and kind boys. And now, and especially now when, you know, this country's divided and we are all coming to a reckoning and really dealing with the way we look at the world and we have to take good hard looks at ourselves. And I told the boys, be brave and be truthful. So those are, that's our mantra bravery and honesty and I, I learned that from this woman and uh yeah so that's my mantra the simplicity of it but like it's so powerful it's so powerful you've yeah. really got to look deep to find the truth mm -hmm. and you've got to be yeah. brave enough to admit it mm -hmm. and yeah. and then talk about it like this woman was able to mm. yeah amazing so, okay, we have a few fun questions to close it off. Oh, fun. <laughs> fun, silly questions. Uh, Naomi, why don't you ask the first one? Just ask whatever you want on the list, or you can make up your own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? You know what? My superpower would be that everybody learned history and everybody was open to a deep understanding of it. Oh, I like that. I think we would all find a great meeting point. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Mom. <laughs> So, okay, I have to ask this. If I, really um, have, if I was really honest, I'd be like, I could get all this money. <laughs> and just live like a queen. <laughs> That's my real, real. Right <laughs> <laughs> but my, my deep wish. <laughs> so we've been asking this a lot in our interviews just because these are our favorite stories to hear. And if you're comfortable sharing this, um, how... What did Nestor do to win you over? Like, what was it that moment? Like, did he do something charming or was it goofy? Like, what did he do to win, win your heart, to win you over? Okay, so you guys are young. I can tell you're really young, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> not as young as I, I'd like to be. No. But you know what? No, it's all <laughs> yeah. I wish, but thank yes. you. <laughs> like, this is so bad what he did. But I'm telling you, it won me over. So we were on a show together. I could tell he liked me. And we were, and in, but on this show, I didn't even know if you'd say this. On this show, um, okay, so he was kind of like flirting with me. And, but on this show, I, I wore really short mini skirts. And I was a businesswoman. So I wore, you remember Heather Locklear in Melrose Place? Did you guys ever watch that? Yes. Like, I was on CW? Yeah. She was like this sexy, yeah, it was on the CW years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I, mm -hmm. yeah, or, yeah. Um, her whole thing was she wore these really tight little mini skirts with this, these jackets and they were like a business suit. And that's how they were dressing me on the show with little tight skirts and a jacket. Well, Nestor, I don't know if I should even say this. You can say it. There. Okay, it's raunchy. So I was <laughs> sitting there and 
I had my legs together and the next week, he literally like took my one of my legs and like shifted it to the side. <laughs> I, and I, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so you would get fired today, right? <laughs> but I was like, oh, like there's a nice, oh my God, I have to go out with this guy. <laughs> That's how he won me over. <laughs> <laughs> the most fun places we call that workplace sexual violence. <laughs> For me, it was like foreplay. <laughs> I <Love> say it. <laughs> it's very spicy. Yeah, but he, he ended up being the best guy too. Like such a he is a gentleman. The, mm. the, yeah. What is um, <laughs> what is your greatest pet peeve? <laughs> Oh, that my screens are dirty. Oh, my my Ooh. device screens are dirty. I can't stand it. And then my kids, when they have little food scabs on them, oh, it drives me nuts. Their screens. Oh, oh, oh. We gotta like wipe it down right away. Like, oh, know. I'm just like, yeah. and then they do it on the fridge handle too. There's all food. Oh, oh. biggest pet peeve. <laughs> I totally hear that. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, are you on social media? Only Instagram. Okay. Oh, I don't know. I have a Facebook page too. Okay, okay. So I don't know if you get these, but like, have you gotten any like funny or strange like DMs or comments that you remember that were memorable? No, but there is a straight, I'll tell you the funniest sort of comment from a stranger. That yeah. Oh, so my girlfriend and I, we, we went in and we were just having a little dinner party for our 50th birthday. And we were just invited a few mutual friends. Mm -hmm. And we went to this cake store. Um, the greatest, if you ever want to get a cake, it's, it's right near the Ivy. And it, it's what, where the Ivy gets their cakes, Naomi. It's, oh, and they put these chocolate covered strawberries on it. And we were like, we're getting this cake. We're splurging on this cake. <laughs> we went into the store and we like we sort of argued over what, cake we were gonna have and it was all back and forth and then at the end the cake guy was standing there he was young and um he said okay what do you want to write on it and we said well happy birthday Rohina and Shannon no happy I think we said happy 50th birthday Rohina and Shannon and we'd already said and he goes your name's Rohina and Shannon we're like oh yeah yeah the, the cake's for us and he's like oh he goes, and he goes oh Oh, don't worry. I, I went to my prom by myself. <laughs> we were, oh my God. <laughs> and we were. You thought you were celebrating your birthdays by yourself? Yeah, I thought we were just going to go home and eat cake together. <laughs> and we were like, yeah, we're losers. That's us. <laughs> oh my God. I guess that's that so dorky comment I've gotten. Naomi, you want to close it off? Yes, absolutely. All right. Finish this sentence. Never have I ever. Climbed a tall mountain. Oh, wow. I've never done that either. Or Me either. Dog, obviously. <laughs> Because <laughs> you think in LA, right? Like LA, everyone's like, there's like so many mountains, like the canyons. Everyone's goes to what is it, Runyon Canyon? I think that's like one of the popular spots, right? Mountain, though. But even then, my friends won't hike with me because I'm too slow. I don't understand <laughs> hiking? It's just walking outside. Yeah, you and my kids. I, I know. Yeah. Really, I don't really love it either. I gotta say. Yeah, like people buy special clothes for it and everything. I'm like, you're just walking outside. You know, doing that. <laughs> exercise. I love. I wish I could. I so wish I could. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me one if you guys know one. Mm. Those at home workouts aren't the same. I know they're not. I'd love to fall in love with Peloton, but we can't afford it yet. So buy my mm. books. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know if I could get into that. Not into what? <laughs> People love it. But, yeah. Um... Oh, jeez. 
Shannon, thank you so much for being here. This went by so fast. It's like, oh, it goes by. You, you were so, it was so much fun just talking. Uh, you guys are the best. Uh, I love you guys. I kind of want to adopt you and then you come <laughs> with me. Thank you. Thank the girls you. I never had. I, want you I know. I feel like we can, like, I don't know, like, just the connection. I know it's Zoom, but it's like so nice to, like, I feel like I can feel your presence, you know? Oh, I like, can even feel though. You both easily. Over the computer. I really do. Like, I want you, you know how when, the, like in the old days, like, you know, the, the great aunts adopted the, the young girls at the marrying age. Oh, yeah. You went to society. Yeah. Both of you. Oh, I'd love that. Thank, thank you so much. This is so much fun. Yes, yes. Thank you. Oh, I love you too. Well, have a okay. beautiful rest of the week. Yeah. And Hopefully uh, stay in touch on Instagram and then uh, definitely come to my book party. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. That was so much fun. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. She's great. <laughs> I didn't even realize it's been like an, it was over an hour. We were like just chatting with her. <laughs> she welcomed us with open arms as soon as she came in. Yep. Yep. She was like, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Ready for <laughs> some girl <laughs> talk. <laughs> I know, and she had such um interesting, like that's like an understanding of like interesting stories, especially about like Hawaii and her connection and her like journey and like with herself and just finding like, friends and being in this beautiful environment. What stood out to you like just during our girl talk? Just, uh, how open she was about the talking about her growing process and her journey like to becoming a better human like yeah she's uh she's planning to become the best human she could possibly be just like her evolution and she's just like open it's like here I was here and then I'm going here and there and then next is <laughs> you know oh yeah I I'm sure she wrote about it a lot about it in her book and um mm -hmm. you know talking about her relationship like with her father and then like her marriage and then like the cancer. I mean, that's a lot. Like, but yeah. she's so, like you said, open and also like wise about it. Like she was very mm -hmm. self-aware. Yeah, yeah. I just loved her energy. I felt so, it was like so warm and so welcoming. Like I literally felt like I was in her house and she like opened the door. It's like, come on in. Yeah, like she like, I was like, I want to get dinner with her. <laughs> Yeah. Like, let's do a girls night out once uh once uh, covid is passed <laughs> totally i feel like she i would love to be adopted by her <laughs> but like she's so young she's and like, me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I'm excited for the book i'm gonna read the book i'm just, like gonna order it mm -hmm. and like see what's next with her i'm totally gonna like go out with her on ig yeah. <laughs> Yes, I love when people can, you can keep up with people on IG, <laughs> finally. <laughs> oh, the best way is like social media, at least now that like you can keep engaging with people that way. Exactly, exactly. And also it doesn't hurt that she thought we were young. I know, we I was like, young oh, ladies. I don't know what to say, like I wish I was younger, but like also at the same time, I'm like, I'm so grateful to be alive. So like- I know, we, right? But I think, I think she probably thought we were like 18, like, you know, you know super snappers. I'm like, yes. God bless her. I was like, no, we're 30 year old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, no, that was great. That was great. It was so awesome. All right, well, girl, I'll close it off. That's it, guys. You've been watching Beauty Cocktails and Girl Talk, and we will see you next time. Bye.